Lawrence, I have this question in front of me today, and the question is, how do we understand the Bible when it seems so far away? But that's not <laughs> maybe the best way to phrase the question. So let me, th let me try to make sense of it here. How do we understand the Bible when it comes from a culture that was so long ago, from a people with a different way of life, some of the words are odd, some of the customs are really odd, uh, some of the measurements are weird, right? There's a lot of stuff. How do we, what do we do when we're trying to, we go in good faith to God's word and we want to understand it, but then we get in and it's hard. Well, I mean, yeah, just first off, just want to have a simple acknowledgement that, yeah, it is challenging at times. Yeah. Um, whether you come across a, you know, a crazy name, you have no idea what... The... Ma <laughs> Maher Shalal Heshbaz. <laughs> sure. Well, you have no idea, like, what... No, Maher Shalal Heshbaz. <laughs> is Isaiah's son, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, you just have, you have no idea a lot It's just of... fun to say. It's fun to say. Yeah. Maher Shalal Heshbaz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um... Yeah, you have, you have weird names, you have weird concepts, you have cultural things that, that yeah, they don't make sense. They're, they're hard to comprehend. It's like, how do I apply something from such a weird context, such a weird thing, and, and try to bring that into today? If you can um, figure that out, I'll give you one denarius. Right, yeah, see, there you go again. <laughs> um, but I think, I think a healthy way of looking at and understanding... Uh, the Bible um, it itself is thinking of thinking of a guitar. You know, think someone gives you a guitar, and you, you have an instrument there. You have all the the, the capabilities within the instrument, at least, uh, to make beautiful sounds, to make uh, high quality music, and, and to have something you know that you just make the instrument sing. Like you have, as far as the instrument is concerned, it has all those capabilities. But, in, in some sense, if, if you've never learned anything before, if you don't know anything about the instrument, yeah. you don't know anything about a guitar, you, you're not going to make that instrument sing. Right, you don't uh, know what to do. You don't it. know what to right. do. Uh, so you might, you know, try your best um, to, uh, may, maybe you can, you can teach yourself, uh, maybe you can get you know, someone else to teach you, uh, and, and I think... And it's really only through those two avenues. Either you, you teach yourself and you get resources and you figure out how to do it yourself, or you go through um, an instructor and they teach you, uh, mm -hmm. this is how you play a G chord, this is how you play a C chord. The, you know, here are the different uh, strum patterns you can use to make the music sound good. And maybe you know, even a better way to have, you know, to be a, a good learner and to be a good steward and to be a good instrumentalist is having principles that you learn on your own through your own resources and you have a teacher coming alongside you and doing it. And then, you know, you're going to be rocking that guitar and you're going to be making it sound great. Yeah, um, so behind the guitar is not just knowing the the chords and how to play them in the strum, but maybe knowing some music theory that is right. the, the foundation, the groundwork there. Yeah, and so you take that those principles of you have a, a teacher who's teaching you, you have... Um, books and resources, things that you're using to learn, to learn how to play this guitar. I think the same principle applies when you're uh, taking a look at uh, Scripture, taking a look at the yeah. Bible, and you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I understand this culture? How do I understand it? How do I make this Bible sing, if, if you know what I'm saying, right, right. Um, in comparing the uh, analogy there? Uh, I think something that's incredibly important that... Uh, I don't think we should take for granted, you know, who's teaching you? Who are you placing yourself under? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's a, a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or uh, maybe it's it's videos you're watching, sermons at home. You know, who's, who's teaching you these things? Um, and are they teaching you well? Because a teacher can bring out uh, so many different aspects of Scripture that you haven't considered before. Uh, and that's just natural in them having studied and having learned more, and they know more about the culture, they know the background. And I think about my professors at Grace College and, and how much light they have shed yeah. um, on Scripture, on context, um, the context of Scripture.
and then it uh, pops off the page when you recognize certain exactly. things. Exactly. You're like, yeah. wow, like I didn't realize how much this meant or all the components that went into it. So yeah, having a, a good teacher um, and, and submitting but you yourself. But do you have to go to seminary to have a good teacher? No, no. I, I, I That's a great question. Um, you don't need to go to seminary to understand your Bible, if that's the question you're asking. Yeah. Um, however, in, in my position, looking at um, going into full-time ministry someday, having right. having um, the the training and things that I've had in seminary are... So there's a place for the seminary, but for most of yeah. the world, most people, uh, the place for learning is... Is I would say it's in the church. In the church, yeah, it's you have your again your pastors, your Sunday school teachers, your missionaries, your whatever um, that are teaching you, and um, and their learning coming from people above them, and the people above them having their learning coming from people above them, and it just um, it's this information flow, uh, and so yeah, you can and you have resources at home, so you have teachers in your church, and you have resources at home. Uh, there are plenty of resources out there. Uh, one that actually comes to mind just in a general understanding of the Bible uh, when you're looking at different verses uh, comes from one of my professors at Grace. Uh, his name is Dr. Harmon, but he has this book. Uh, it's called Asking the Right Questions, and it just kind of walks through, you know, if you're reading your Bible and you're trying to, to glean as much as you can from uh, a text and, and, uh, and trying to apply it to your life, it has simple questions uh, to walk through uh, in your Bible study, in your uh, devotions, to, to take as much as you can and to apply it to your life. Uh, and there are plenty of things to address culture as well. That was one of the things you mentioned, like all these crazy names, all these uh, currencies, all of the uh, these different concepts and ways of life that people have yeah. that is just foreign to us. Um, but yeah, plenty of, of handbooks and, and uh, commentaries and studies. I think every, publish, every Christian publishing house has a handbook mm -hmm. for the Bible. So Zondervan has one, Holman has one. They're, where basically they come alongside the Bible like an expanded study Bible with only a side companion instead of being at the bottom of the page. But And it explains what is that denarius that I was right. asking about. Yeah. What is a cubit? What is mm -hmm. this passage talking about when now you have... Uh, I don't remember exactly where it is, but you have that passage about marriage where if if I had a brother and he died without having children, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to marry his, his wife and have children on his... For him, yeah. Yeah, that's odd. <laughs> yeah. But a handbook... Yeah. And again, there's, there's many that are out there, some perhaps better than others, but m many that are out there that are good will help to explain what's going on in some of those odd places yeah and just like in the analogy and the analogy i use just like a guitar um you have an instrument you have the bible in front of you and it has all the capabilities all the answers um there and so having a good teacher uh, a good pastor uh, to be teaching you and bringing those principles having good resources to learn and study yourself uh, and then I, I think thirdly which is, is maybe implied but uh, just having a general faithfulness to study it, um, yes, and and a willingness to try to understand. Uh, I I think sometimes we can get trapped in a mindset where, uh, oh, I don't understand this. I'm gonna take a step back and uh, right, and just not be faithful. Enough. A lot of times we don't approach scripture because we're afraid we won't understand it. But that's right. not really a good option. Um, I I don't. I have a very high regard. Very high regard, as you know, and as you do yourself, for Scripture. But I want to be careful here that we don't make Scripture the fourth person of the Godhead, where we have people teaching about Scripture and forget the triune Godhead and the Holy Spirit and His role as our ultimate teacher. So, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you Christ, you have the promised Holy Spirit, and He has come to teach you what He has revealed to you through His apostles and prophets. And there is a tremendous amount that can be learned. Don't let 
those obstacles of a faraway place, a faraway culture, some of the peculiar oddities of Scripture deter you from studying God's Word. Again, you have the Holy Spirit to teach you. There are a lot of different resources, both written and human resources, in a good, solid Bible teaching church. And you can and should take advantage of those. And then my last word of advice to you before we sign off is if you have a son, another son sometime in the near future, you should call him Maher Shalal Heshbaz. <laughs> no? Uh, I won't. <laughs> All right, you can scratch that last piece of advice, but stick with the earlier stuff. <laughs>